Welcome back to Storytime with Mrs. Figs. This evening, I'm going to read a book entitled Wild About Books. But before I read it, I have to confess to you that I am wild about books. I'm guessing that you're wild about books because you're joining me for story time. And there's someone else who's wild about books. And her name is Julie Moore. And she is the owner of our independent bookstore here where I live in Camarillo, California. It opens, opened its doors in 1973. And Julie is so wild about books that she offered to let me borrow books from her shop so I could share them with you. So I just wanted to say a very sincere thank you to Miss Julie. And if you wanted to thank her, I'm sure you could find her on her store Facebook page, which is The Bookworm in Camarillo, California. Without further ado, let's read Wild About Books, written by Judy Sierra. And the illustrations are by Mark Brown. Wild About Books. It started the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer, and sat in her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. By reading aloud from a good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose a wombat, an oryx, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of skinks. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Okay. We're gonna try and make the camera scan around to another little animal who's excited about reading. And this is Miss Josephine. Josephine, are you joining us for story time? Okay, you may have heard her scratching. <laughs> so since she's like a little beast in a zoo, I thought I would include her in the story. Let's go back to the last page. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. And that kind of looks like my little Josephine right there. Forsaking their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild about wonderful books, choosing thin books and fat books and cat in the hat books and new books and true books and heaps of how-to books. Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets crave small books while geckos could only read stick to the wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter, who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Raccoons read alone, and baboons read in bunches. And llamas read dramas 
while eating their lunches. Hyenas share jokes with the red-bellied snakes, and they howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo, who adored Nancy Drew, began solving mysteries right there in the zoo, such as, why were the bandicoots books overdue? Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right, for the boa constrictor squeezed Crichter too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up Goodnight Moon with their paws. Giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off of the pages. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails. Penguins wrote with their bills. And porcupines wrote with their very own quills. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barbary ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer Prize. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork and a new, to build a branch library right there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check the books out. We can put them on shelves. And they did, and they do, up to this very day. Three cheers for the zoobrary. Hip, hip, hooray. When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nests, and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. The end. And the author and the illustrator wrote a note in the back. And they said, this book is for our favorite doctor, artist, poet, and fun concoctor, Theodore Seuss Giesel, which is Dr. Seuss. Here's to going wild and staying wild about books. Until next time, much love to you.